So, um, hello everyone. Welcome to this week's Open Forum and Combustion Simulation Webinar. And it's my great pleasure to introduce to you today's speaker, Professor Zhichen. And Professor Zhichen is an assistant professor at Peking University. He received his PhD from University of Cambridge in 2017 and then conducted postdoctoral research at Cambridge, Sandia and DLR in Stuttgart. Stuttgart. In 2019, he was recognized by the Royal Academy of Engineering as a Tier 1 Exceptional Talent of the UK and then worked at Robinson College a senior research fellow before joining Peking University in 2021. He is a recipient of several scientific awards, including the 2020 Bernard Lewis Fellowship from the Combustion Institute and the um, Best, U user, Best User UK National Super Computing Service from the EPSRC. He is currently leading the different open source project of the deep modeling community with the scope to leverage the rapidly growing AI technology for combustion research. And the title of Professor Chen's talk is Different and Open Source Machine Learning Empowered CFD Package for Reacting Flow at All Speeds Based on Open Phone Cantaral Torch Coupling. And if you have any questions during this talk, please submit them in the Zoom chat, and I can ask Professor Chen at the end of the presentation on your behalf. Thank you. And the time is yours, Professor Chen. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lee, for the uh, kind introduction. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening uh, to those in Europe, uh, my old friends, if you're staying uh, so late. Um, I'm, my, um, I'm Zhi Chen from um, a Peking University um, and the AI for Science Institute, Beijing. Um, and first of all, I would like to thank um, my former colleague, Huang Wei, um, for um, inviting me to this um, uh, seminar series. Um, and uh, it's been a great series so far. I've really learned a lot and uh, I've taken quite a few pieces from, from this um, webinar as well um, into my code, uh, as you will see, and thanks to the open source community. Um, and today I would like to introduce um, this open source project I've been working on the, in the last 10, 12 months, uh, 10, 11 months or so um, called Deep Flame. Um, and before I start, uh, I would like to thank more my collaborators. Uh, first, in particular, uh, Professor Tianhan Zhang. Um, and uh, during, I think, probably this time last year, we came up with this name, Deep Flame, together uh, during a takeaway dinner before the deadline of the symposium submissions. Um, and uh, it turned out to be a, a great name, I think. Um, and I would also like to acknowledge um, Professor Zhi Qinxu for his um, great expertise in deep learning, um, and which really has brought to Deep Flame to a uh, next level. And I'm also very grateful for um, um, Professor Wei Nan Er, the um, a director of um, AI for Science Institute Beijing. Um, and of course, um, all my students, postdocs, and the AISI uh, researchers um, for their hard work uh, in, in the last um, few months um, so we could um, release this um, point one version of Deep Flame. Okay, this is a, the outline of my talk today. Um, first, I would like to briefly talk about the uh, current trends for AI-assisted combustion research, and basically why start Deep Flame. So uh, machine learning for combustion research uh, is really uh, growing rapidly, um, and in many combustion areas, 
Um, and for example, we are looking for faster and more accurate modeling, and or we are looking for new techniques for data analysis or novel experimental um, measurements and so on. And all of these, uh, I think we have seen uh, two good review papers um, by um, Professor Matthias Emme from Stanford University, uh, and also the uh, by Professor Zhou and Wei from um, uh, Tianjin University. I, I think these two papers have really uh, nicely summarized the recent uh, progresses uh, in uh, machine learning for combustion. So today we will focus on um, the first topic, um, since this is an open form um, combustion uh, simulation seminar, uh, webinar, um, and um, uh, really uh, what we have experienced in combustion modeling in the past few decades um, is the um, uh, essential difficulty coming from the multi-scale flow and chemistry um, and their interactions. Um, and this difficulty really comes down to three different aspects. Um, the first one being the non-resolvable scale turbulence. Um, and the second one is the uh, non-resolvable uh, non scale chemistry. And the last one is their interactions. And these uh, difficulties have um, really motivated the um, extensive uh, research in um, unresolved turbulence uh, modeling. Um, for example, in the RANS case, you will see uh, K-epsilon uh, model. And in LES, you have the um, Smagrinsky model for um, uh, most cases. Um, and these are the typical um, unresolvable scale turbulence models. And for the um, uh, chemical kinetics, um, since it's really difficult to uh, resolve down to the very, very small time scales in um, um, a complex chemistry system. Um, and what we have done um, so far is basically to integrate um, the reaction rate within a time interval using uh, either um, RK type of explicit uh, integrators or CVOD uh, type of uh, implicit integrators. Um, so that we can get a mean reaction rate over a uh, affordable um, time step. And for the last one, which is known as the TCI model, um, we have uh, all kinds of um, models like flamelet model, thickened flame model, and so on. Um, for the first one today, I will not uh, mention too much. This is not really a, a combustion topic. Two of my colleagues at SUSTEC and um, um, Peking University, Professor Jian Chun Wan and the Professor uh, uh, Yao Ming Zhao, they have worked really uh, nicely towards the unresolvable scale um, turbulence models. So if you're interested, you can um, you can uh, search their papers and, and, and look at some of the most recent uh, progresses. So um, today we will um, focus on the last two um, aspects. Um, and I will give uh, some examples in the following slides to show you how we are tackling these difficulties. So um, first, I'd like to uh, give a, a brief um, a, a introduction to the combustion research trajectory I've uh, really uh, climbed up um, since I started my PhD at Cambridge 10 years ago. Um, at the beginning of my research, really, I was focusing on the flamelet revised, um, which is known as the flare model. Um, and this was basically um, for turbulent flames. And also, I did um, quite a bit of mild combustion. Um, and these were uh, very fundamental um, uh, turbulent combustion modeling research um, using um, a an, an, uh, flamelet revised um, approach. Um, and then um, after I graduated, I went on to um, a slightly more practical um, topic, which is the LES of uh, thermoacoustic instability. Um, I worked extensively with um, um, 
colleagues around the world to look at uh, the uh, self-excited thermoacoustic inst instability within uh, model gas turbine and industrial gas turbine combustors um, using, of course, um, a relatively um, a, for, a more affordable approach, uh, a flamelet type approach for combustion modeling. And then um, if from 2019 um, on, I turned a little bit to the um, code development for high order adaptive codes for uh, the nest of um, sub and subson uh, supersonic uh, com uh, compressible flows um, at uh, my post at Robinson College. Um, and then um, recently, um, I really switched focus to um, deep learning powered um, modeling for reactive flows. Um, and developed um, some deep learning based models and also uh, the um, topic today, the um, um, deep learning empowered um, computational platform, Deep Flame. Okay, so at the beginning, um, when I worked on the um, uh, fundamental TCI model development, uh, I did not care too much about the computational code itself. So basically, for a long time, I used ANSYS Fluent, um, which was quite um, sufficient to get um, some nice uh, feedbacks for the modeling um, developments uh, we've made, and we could see the um, um, we could capture a quite difficult problem, a lifted flame problem with a simple commercial software, and I also tried um, Star CD. Uh, with my colleague um, and on the ice engine combustion, and it worked also fine. Okay, um, but this was mainly for runs. We realized okay, um, the affluent may not be good enough for LES. So towards the second half of my PhD, I went on to open form, um, and then worked with um, two of the major. Um, gas turbine manufacturers, Rolls-Royce and the Mitsubishi Heavy Industries for problems um, like this. And let me just click on these. Um, I'm mainly focusing on the um, thermoacoustic instability problems. Um, and this worked uh, just fine. Um, but also we could only use a flame type of models um, for um, complex geometries like this. Um, and then my interest shifted towards compressible flows and combustion in compressible flows. So we tried some um, shockwave um, boundary layer interaction simulations use a, a sixth order a finite difference code, I, I implemented the uh, combustion module into this code called ASTR. And also we developed a um, um, AMR code, uh, a fourth order finite, uh, finite, uh, finite volume code. Um, and this is um, supersonic hydrogen uh, flame, um, which is um, a very a well known flame um, conducted by Chen at all in the early nineties. Okay. So um, after all this time, I realized um, what I've done previously in um, for complex geometries and um, fundamental turbulence modeling and um, high order um, codes, they were not really compatible. Okay. So they, they seemed like very um, independent um, problems um, and which has really been a, a limiting factor for us to go forward. So I was rethinking about my uh, future directions. So I realized, okay, maybe we could try something different. Maybe it could be game changing. Okay. Uh, so I went on to um, the deep learning based models um, and um, essentially to resolve this current um, trilemma. Um, among accuracy, basically you have you suffer from accuracy problems for simple TCI models, and 
you cannot really run um, complex chemistry with in, um, ODE integrators. Um, and uh, this is um, an efficiency problem. And also you are facing a trade-off problem between those two and which really uh, limits your scalability. And you cannot really go to very um, large scale simulations. And what we really need is a platform for us to explore these um, deep learning based models and algorithms to resolve this um, issue, um, this trilemma issue. And I will give you um, some examples in the following slides. Okay. Uh, first of all, let's look at the um, at TCI modeling. Um, and I'm cross referencing um, Professor Alessandro Parente. Uh, talk uh, earlier also on this webinar series. Um, so we really we are finding ourselves on this um, diagram. If we want to use larger comp uh, computational systems with a lot of cells, um, we really have to just go to flame-like approaches. And if we are interested in um, the detailed kinetics. Um, we are really limited by the number of cells we can go to, okay? Uh, you have some um, trade-off options in the middle, like um, a PSR or CMC approaches, but again, you are quite limited by the kinetic um, integration. Um, and so if we first um, go up towards this direction and see what we can do with deep learning, um, and we know that uh, flamelet modeling relies on uh, strong assumptions. The first one being um, turbulent flame is an example of uh, laminar flamelets. So um, this is a well-known, and this is basically the, the fundamental uh, assumption of um, flamelet modeling. There's nothing we can do about that. Um, but there's another strong uh, assumption called um, statistical independence assumption which assumes the turbulent scalar fluctuations um, to be independent um, and also they follow a presumed uh, distribution and for which we usually use a beta PDF. And so uh, let's look at uh, a DNS of um, lifted flame and see whether this assumption really is a good assumption. Um, and we can for example, take a small cube from um, this region of the flame and you can do the um, PDF plot. You can see uh, in the DNS, obviously you have a um, positive correlation on the lean side and um, on this side, and you have a negative correlation um, on the rich side. And if you use an independent beta PDF, you can see basically there is no correlation you can do with this assumption. Um, and by the PDF itself is not a very good um, prediction. And we also tried to look at the DNS of a mild combustion case. And this was done by uh, one of my former colleagues, um, Professor Doan. Um, and um, we also looked at the um, uh, PDF of the uh, um, progress variable and mixture fraction, we could see that um, there is a strong correlation for mild combustion as well, um, but a beta PDF could not do too much about it. Okay, so the conclusion is basically the beta PDF uh, lacks accuracy, um, but how do we improve it? Um, so the really mi the missing point is the statistical correlation between the st scalar fluctuations and Let's take this as an example to showcase uh, the two types of modeling approaches or paradigms, I should say, um, which are physics-based um, and uh, data-driven approaches. So um, what we have observed in DNS, is it the case even in the experiments? The answer is yes. Um, this is an experiment conducted by um, Dr. Barlow from Sandia. Um, and on this uh, Sydney inhomogeneous um, burner, and we could see a strong correlation even from the experimental results, okay? Um, and 
To improve this, if we use a physics-based analytical approach, um, what we have done is that we have introduced the copula method um, to correlate the two independent uh, PDFs and using a um, um, odds ratio, and this odds ratio theta depends on the um, um, the covariance of the uh, two um, variables. Okay, I, I will not go to details um, with this um, approach, and you can um, read these um, as a C CTM paper to um, um, for the details. Okay. Um, and what we observed was that um, with a um, copula method, you could get um, a decent um, shape for the, um, um, BT, the PDF for both the flame case and the mild combustion case. Okay, it, it looks okay um, on the PDF itself. Um, and on the other hand, if we use a data-driven modeling approach, um, basically what we need to do is that we need to sample um, from the DNS data and do some uh, pre-processing to form an input matrix. Um, and the target would be the in, um, components of the joint PDF, okay? Um, and we did this um, using a simple um, fully connected um, Three layer, um, uh, actually four layer um, DNN, and we got um, actually quite good results, um, even better than the copula method. Okay. And we also did a quantitative um, assessment using the Janssen Shannon um, divergence. And the results showed that um, basically, if we use a um, so a, the smaller the JSD, the better the agreement between the two distributions, and we could see the DNN gave um, much better results on the PDF prediction. Okay, that is um, quite clear. We can get a substantial improvement from the DNN um, using deep learning. Um, what about the more important uh, modeling for um, reaction rate? Okay. Um, and excuse me, there's a um, typo here. Um, and basically, this is the, the central problem for turbulent combustion modeling. We need to get this filtered reaction rate um, through a model. Okay, for um, flamelet CMC or CSC type of models, we need a um, closure equation um, to close this term. And um, basically, um, we need a good uh, PDF model uh, to describe the um, control variables or the conditional variables. So um, we did a test on the DNS data, basically, uh, we've taken the original unfiltered um, reaction rate and then filtered the reaction rate. Um, and this is what we get. And we could also get a DNS model. Basically, we take the PDF directly from the DNS and this is the DNS model. This is the best you can get basically for this closure and not only for flamelet, but also for um, the other conditional um, methods. And uh, if we use a beta PDF and a copula method and a DNN, well, the results look actually um, from a naked eye, they look quite similar. And if we plot these um, predictions on this scatter plot, we can see um, the DNN, actually the, the red ones, they show a better agreement, um, but the copula and the beta PDF um, they are not too far off, okay? So um, quantitatively, DNN gives a 20% improvement. Is it really worth the effort and the risk? And, and we should not forget um, the lookup table with the beta PDF has no computational um, overhead, okay? It's basically, you can take them as instant. Um, and for the DNN, you have to train the model, you have to deploy the model, you have to inference the model, and, and also you have to change your code. There's a lot of overhead work you have to do. 
um, is that really worth the effort for 20% improvement? That is really a question. So um, shall we look at more challenging problems if that's the case? So if we come back to this diagram, if we go towards the kinetic studies side, the central problem for this, and everybody knows, is the um, ODE problem. Um, the numerical integration of the chemical kinetics of these, okay? Um, and in most cases, if you have, uh, you don't even need to go to very large stiff mechanisms. Um, you can easily get over 90% of your time on this integration. And another limiting factor is the time stepping size. You have, if you have a stiff uh, mechanism, then your time stepping size is also limited and which further increases the cost. And, and this has been the main hurdle for the turbulent combustion simulation with detailed chemistry. So can we do something uh, with deep learning on this so that we can use detailed chemistry integration on turbulent combustion simulations? Um, and then of course we would need a good deep learning model to predict um, chemical kinetics. And frankly speaking, I was initially quite skeptical about those approaches. Um, we have seen quite a few AI-assisted uh, uh, methods um, in the last few years, um, and I could not see how they could be generalized and could not. Um, I was not um, so confident they could become case independent. Okay, um, and then. I met the um, Professor John and Professor Xu, and they um, they really convinced me with that with this deep CK met method, um, and which is a gen generic um, multi scale sampling approach. Um, I will not go to um, too much into detail with this method, as I believe uh, Tian Han has um, a separate talk um, scheduled later, also in this um, seminar series. Um, so um, just to give a very, very brief um, explanation, um, basically what we need is an ideal sampling that has the advantage of the case independent Monte Carlo sampling and the accuracy we can get from a manifold sampling, okay? Um, and for Monte Carlo sampling, obviously for combustion problems, um, it can get decent results for large scales, um, for example, the major species um, reaction rates, but for the small scale, um, which only accounts for a small portion of your sampling um, space, then it becomes really, really bad. Uh, on the other hand, for the manifold, if you have a pure manifold um, case, then you will get perfect results. But if you have slightly protruded, uh, protruded input, your model becomes quite vulnerable. Um, to those perturbations. Okay, so the multi uh, scale sampling method, uh, deep CK, is really um, tackling this problem uh, nicely. And uh, we can see uh, on manifold and perturbations, uh, both they give quite good results. Um, I would um, suggest you to uh, read this paper if you're really interested in this method or get in direct uh, contact with. Um, uh, Tian Han and Zhu Qin for uh, their advice. Okay, so what I have done um, so far on the deep CK um, method um, is essentially taking the pre-trained model um, and um, use them for multi-dimensional uh, simulations. Okay, um, and this is uh, from Tian Han's um, uh, GitHub. Um, page and there is a Fortran interface code available. And if you have a Fortran code, you can try with this code and, and it should work just fine. Okay. Um, I have used this code for a, a 2D uh, lifted triple flame and also a 3D lifted um, um, turbulent flame and implemented in this factor code with uh, uh, fourth order accuracy. And these are some uh, results. Um, and it worked uh, quite well, I think. Um, and it also raised more problems. Um, 
so most of the operations in Fortran we did, for example, the matrix multiplication was not optimized for DNN inference. And by contrast, we have very, very mature um, and highly optimized um, libraries such as um, TensorFlow and Torch. Can we leverage those um, libraries? And, and that's the first question. And the second being, um, so most of the current deep learning resources, they are more friendly to C++ codes. And, and uh, of course, we're interested in um, how to couple those um, AI libraries to open form. And also um, what we wanted to do is to leverage the heterogeneous systems, which has become a, um, a trend for all the um, um, computational chip manufacturers, for example. And this was the news from yesterday, I think. Um, and the NVIDIA has announced their um, Grace Hopper super chip, which is basically a heterogeneous architecture to have both CPU and GPU on the same chip. And um, we were quite pleased to see OpenForm was actually listed in their um, article, and um, which has really shown um, we are gaining a lot more um, attention from um, areas and uh, for example, in AI and the HPC. Okay, so um, I have spent a lot of time on um, the background of Deep Flame. Um, basically, what has motivated Deep Flame is that we want to facil uh, facilitate the um, AI assi assisted combustion modeling research. And also, we really need an open source platform for the um, um, multi disciplinary. Um, collaboration and uh, also um, we want to together with other research fields to push scientific computing to the next level so we joined this um, deep modeling community and which is uh, among the world's largest communities pursuing the new paradigm of uh, AI for science um, you have, and uh, basically we have um, a collection of open source um, softwares on this GitHub organization. And you can see from uh, molecular dynamics um, and uh, this, um, I think this is uh, organic. Um, so it's a uh, differentiable, um, I think this is a molecular force field um, or we have the, um, density functional theory um, package and deep flame. So we really cover a wide range of scientific computing areas and there's a lot of information and techniques we could uh, techniques we could exchange and um, to push um, our big community to the next level. Okay, so um, next I would like to um, spend quickly spend some time on what we can do now with the deep flame code. Okay, um, so basically the idea is simple. Um, we are coupling OpenForm with Cantera and, and PyTorch uh, libraries. Um, we use OpenForm as the PDE solvers and, and the base framework um, for the CFD. And we use a Cantera for all the thermal chemistry calculations and the uh, kinetics calculations. Um, and we use the um, Torch library to deal with all the um, um, DNN related operations. Um, so at the beginning, we had to um, carefully design this framework because we did not want to um, just make it work. Um, and we wanted to have a package of um, libraries which can really get upgraded regularly with the dependency libraries. Um, so um, what we did then was we made no modifications to the OpenForm and Cantara and Torch source codes. Uh, basically that allows you to directly use the pre-compiled um, binary shell libraries as deep, uh, deep flame dependencies. 
and you can quickly install on different platforms using, uh, for example, APT or Conda package managers. And this has really um, eased our um, work required to um, get upgraded with uh, OpenFORM and Cantera new versions. And um, we have also uh, categorized the um, classes in the code. Basically, the green ones, um, they are open form based ones, um, the finite volume um, base framework, and the volume and scalar field um, operation classes, and, um, and the MPI, the basic MPI framework, we kept the same as the open form so far. And we take Kantara as the um, um, drive force for mixture related and chemistry related um, calculations um, and all the HPC related data structure conversion uh, vectorization and the tensor operations were done by the um, torch uh, CPI, uh, APIs. Okay. Um, and the design, design concept is really just to keep the base framework and the simplest thermal type, which is the fluid thermal, you can find this in pimple form, um, is not the complicated one you find in reacting form. Um, and we did this deliberately to make everything simple and um, um, completely decouple from the open form um, combustion and mixture uh, classes. And Cantara does uh, what it does the best, uh, the chemical um, properties and reaction rate calculations. And of course, Torch deals with the, um, the tensor operations and the inference um, with um, highly optimized uh, codes, okay? And we have really simplified the learning curve for non-combustion background developers. We have um, actually developers from the AI background, H HPC background, and even hardware manufacturers, and they are working with us. Um, okay. And um, this is a, um, a diagram to show how we refactored the uh, thermal physical uh, physiochemistry library um, in open form. We basically um, took off all the uh, mixture and uh, reaction related um, classes, and we only kept the, the simplest fluid thermal. And we give everything to Kantara to deal with the chemistry and uh, thermal um, physical uh, property calculations. And also we can use um, the computationally heavy tensor operation like uh, matrix multiplications um, uh, by the um, um, torch libraries. And just to give a, a more explicit example, um, this is what you need in the constant folder um, for if you're doing combustion simulation, use the open form combustion models, you would get a list of dictionaries in your folder and you have to deal with all these. And what, what, we, what we need now in Deep Flame is basically um, you have a, a simple Cantara Torch properties dictionary and everything, everything else is quite simple. And you can even use the uh, native um, Cantara uh, mechanism file um, and this is really handy, okay? And for this Cantara Torch Properties uh, Dictionary, and it's not that complicated, and you can read all these uh, entries and they are quite straightforward uh, to use. And after all these refactoring, we basically formed four essential layers. Uh, in the basic, uh, basics layer, we have the dependency libraries, um, and then we have built this um, HPC layer so that we can reform, for example, the open form um, native data structure for um, the DNN inference, for example, and um, some other HPC related operations can be done in this layer. And we have the function layer uh, to form the um, mixture chemistry and combustion problems uh, using a object uh, oriented uh, fashion. And if you are just a user, you don't have to worry too much about the bottom layers. You have four basic um, solvers you can use. You can use the uh, 0D 
um, solver for ignition problems or the low mark foam, you can use the uh, for your low mark flow um, and combustion. And if you're, you, you are doing uh, supersonic flow and combustion, you can use the high speed foam. And if, if, if you, you have to deal with sprays, then um, there is also a solver called DF spray foam available. So um, to sum up, basically we have built a user-friendly, fully open to developers um, platform. And we are doing the development and release note very regularly um, and fully open to the public. So you can look at all these release notes. You can see the bug fix, the refactoring and everything in every commit. Um, and for example, this is the um, point one version we released um, earlier this week. And you can read all the details in this tag link. And we have also built a documentation website so that you can um, read the how to install and run some tutorial examples. And if you're interested um, in developing Deep, Deep Flame, you can submit a pull request following the instructions. Okay, um, so how, and the next question is, um, how accurate is Deep Flame? And are we really doing this correctly? Um, before I start introducing all these results, I should say um, all the DNN models and algorithms were developed and trained independently by the deep combustion team led by um, Professor Zhi Qingxu at, at Shanghai Jiao Tong University and Professor Tian Han Zhang at um, Southern University of Science and Technology. Okay, and this is their website. If you're interested in using um, DNN with your own code, and uh, you're welcome to contact them directly uh, through this website. Um, and the first case I would like to show is the uh, zero deform results. And this is a typical PSR um, reactor results. And we're comparing the constant volume ignition. Um, and we can see the DCVOD DN results uh, agree um, very well. And even for the time, um, evolution for each single species, we get an um, identical match for those two integrators. And for the low mark foam, um, we have done the validation through this typical one dimensional planar premixed flame. And we looked at the um, uh, flame structure across the flame, and we can see it gives a good agreement um, between the two uh, solvers. And we have done this for a range of equivalence ratios um, for the flame speed and the um, um, thickness. And we can see um, it gives a good agreement for the Python version of Kantara, which is a steady state um, solver. OK, um, for higher, uh, higher dimensional problems, uh, this is a, a triple flame case uh, we have made. And um, I should say all the all the uh, examples I'm showing on these slides, they are available on our documentation website. You can find all these details um, through these links. OK, um, and again, we can see the temporal um, evolution of this triple flame um, is matched very well um, by the DNN and uh, even across the radio profile, we get um, nearly identical uh, results. And with turbulence, we have tried this two-dimensional flame in homogeneous isotropic turbulence. Um, and this is a, um, a turbulent Reynolds number 700 within the thin reaction zone. Um, and this setup, uh, we could see a turbulent um, chemistry interaction captured also quite well by the DNN. And um, we have also done this um, recently very popular benchmark case, this three-dimensional um, Taylor Green Vortex with flame. Um, and we basically um, got um, very close results with the uh, sixth order um, finite difference 
uh, DNS code uh, Dino um, with both the CVOD and the DNN solvers. And for the high speed uh, case, um, this is the um, typical 1D re uh, reactive shock tube. Um, and we could see um, the deep flame gives um, a good agreement with the formal study using a fifth order uh, window scheme. And for detonation, um, we have also done some simple cases with the um, AMR. Um, and we can see. And, and we should say the uh, original uh, library was, was taken from uh, these two libraries and we have refactored for deep flame and we also extended the 2D and 3D library to just the 1D case um, I'm showing here. And the uh, destination speed um, agrees quite well um, with the um, SD2 box um, results for both the hydrogen and methane result um, fuels. And we could also use a high-speed foam um, for large mechanism um, detonation. And this is a typical result for a um, inhibiting um, detonation problem. And for 2D AMR detonation, um, we could also see the um, um, the wave structure and the cellular structures um, using DF uh, high-speed foam. And finally, and this is still under development, um, and this is a very preliminary result from uh, the um, open foam Arkham bomb. Uh, we could get uh, also um, reasonable results for the evaporation and combustion from the DF spray foam. Okay. Um, we uh, a large um, portion of effort has has been spent actually on the um, HPC side for deep flame. Um, so let's look at the um, um, first the scalability uh, of deep flame. Um, first of all, when it comes to uh, largely um, parallel simulations, dynamic load balance is. Uh, um, is an essential problem. And I was really inspired and benefited by this webinar series. Um, we basically took the um, algorithm in DLB form um, from the Alto University, um, and it is a separate module within Deep Flame. And we should thank the original authors for their contribution. And we have also implemented the simpler, but probably more um, useful um, balance scheme from Abiform um, to deal with a very large num number of cores. Um, for the uh, one destination simulation, we can see with both AMR and DLB, we basically get a speed up um, by a factor of 10 um, overall. And for the 3D Taylor Green uh, Vortex Flame simulation, and we're comparing with the state of the art codes um, and we could see deep flame actually gives the um, the quickest um, result for every micro um, second um, simulated and for this um, mesh size we did a scalability test we could see up to um, eight nine thousand we could get a um, quite good um scalability um and we have also taken a step step towards the heterogeneous computing um and we have automatic architecture um identification um from the torch device api and uh, so basically you don't have to tell uh, what um chips are you using for the simulation uh it can automatically uh, identify. So we tried both the general architectures, uh, so the Intel AMD um, CPU plus the M NVIDIA GPUs, and we tried um, a range of DP uh, GPUs within the CUDA framework. And we have also tried the Sogon. This is a Chinese uh, manufacturer, um, the CPU plus a deep learning computing unit. And this is an AI specific acceleration chip based on the AMD Rokum. Um, framework. And for, for a um, 
a sampling, basically this is a pure chemistry problem, uh, zero D chemistry problem. Um, if you use DNN with CPU inference, you can um, get a speed up um, basically by a factor of three if you are simulating um, around 100,000 cells. And if you're using a GPU, then you get um, acceleration um, by a factor of uh, a magnet, uh, order of ma two, two orders of magnitude. And for the uh, multidimensional problem, um, which is obviously more complicated because you have to solve for the chemical source, the um, equation for the species and the flow um, energy and get the um, uh, temperature from your polynomials and you have to do the diffusion um, coefficient co correction steps. So basically you combine all these together um, on different platforms. So the um, the Sargon um, uh, DCU, uh, NVIDIA um, 3090 and the um, um, NVIDIA um, 3070 uh, TI, we can all um, see a good speed up. Of course, you can get um, variations depending on the actual um, hardware, but the overall trend is that the chemistry itself, you basically get um, nearly two orders of magnitude. And for the overall speed up is about a node of magnitude. Um, and it's slightly uh, less impressive. This is because the, this new Intel um, i7 is not really a parallel uh, computing chip and has a, a extremely high um, uh, single core uh, computing power. Okay. Right. Um, we also tried to scale up the heterogeneous computing, and unfortunately, we don't have a um, supercomputer like Summit, uh, which could allow us to use a large number of GPUs. So we tried this on um, on the Sargon platform. We used um, up to um, 600 cars, 5,000 cores, and we could see we get a uh, a very good speed up and the linear scalability um, for uh, both chemistry and chemistry plus flow. Okay, so finally, the outlook for future developments. Uh, we are doing more uh, practical cases. This is the Cambridge stratified burner, and uh, these are the preliminary results. And we are hoping to get some uh, results um, before the end of this year. And also there's a lot of um, under development um, topics we're doing. Uh, for example, the real fluid and um, machine learning assisted TCI model, et cetera. Um, and also we're looking to implement the flow calculations on the GPU, which can give another um, speed up, um, hopefully in the, in the next following month. Okay, so the final rem uh, final remarks. Um, I, if you have any problem, just uh, submit an issue on GitHub uh, for Deep Flame. And if if you would like to become a developer, you can just simply submit a PR. Um, and we are actually seeking um, postdoc and long term researcher uh, to join us. Um, and all these organizations and institutes are hiring. If you are interested, please get in touch. And finally, um, uh, I would like to thank the um, um, AI, Science, uh, AI, Institute, AI for Science Institute Beijing, AISI for the support. And um, I'm happy to take questions. Sorry, I'm running a bit um, over time, I think. Okay, thank you, Professor Zichen for a very wonderful and exciting talk. Yeah, it's a very interesting project. And now I will go through all the questions asked by, by the audience in the chat. Mm -hmm. I think we have two questions here and I will read them to Professor Shen. And first question is from Hong Yuan Di. Hello, dear Professor Chen. I'm from Beijing Jiao Tong University. And I'm also a loyal friend of your deep friend on GitHub. And recently, we have been paying attention to the radiation problem 
under high pressure and high temperature combustion and high match number combustion. Mac number. And I'm really curious about your specific skills in dealing with radiation, even in the late in the latest version of deep flame release on November 14th. And I would like to ask you about your ideas and specific solutions when dealing with combustion radiation problems in combination with deep flame. Thank you. Okay, sorry, I had to stop the sharing because I could not find the Zoom window. Yeah, okay. Um, thank you for the question. Um, and thank you for your for following Deep Flame on GitHub. Um radiation is um is a difficult problem. Um I frankly I should say we have not really um taken um too much time in um uh, to look at this um particular um problem. Um, but what one thing I can say is, um, or I should have said in the talk, is that um, all the add-on um, functions can be easily implemented um, from OpenForm, the latest um, release of, of, of OpenForm um, into Deep Flame, depending on the need. Um, since we have built a very easy uh, framework for um, for upgrading um, and uh, compatibility. Um, and for the radiation problem in particular, I think um, if it is a multi-phase problem, um, during the development, we have turned off radiation um, so far. So we have not really looked into radiation in the multi-phase case. And um, if you look at the source code, you can see that um, and um, the the DF spray form is still under um, development, and uh, we uh, of course uh, in the near future we will um, resolve this. Um, I think we had some compilation issues with the radiation module, so why, that's why we we have taken that bit out of the code. Um, and if it's a general question for gas phase um, radiation, I think. Um, you can simply um, implement your mod model at the solver level, okay? Um, you don't even need to go to the uh, source code um, or the, um, the the base layers. Um, you can easily install uh, or implement your um, source terms in the energy equation, okay? Okay. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Um... By the way, for those people in the panel list, if you want to, you can open your microphone to ask Professor Chen directly if you want. Yeah. Okay, next question is from Dong Yang. Mm -hmm. Many thanks for this inspiring talk, Professor Chen, mm -hmm. regarding the application for turbulent, turbulent combustion in real applications, even for the relatively simple fields, such as methane, methane, hydrogen, yeah. Combustion simplified chemical kinetic together with turbulent combustion models are accurately are actually very experience based. No standard models are available, especially when different equivalent ratios, pressures, pressures are considered. This is a bit surprising, disappointing to me, and disappointing to me. Do you have any idea how the current program you have proposed could help to relieve the difficulty? Okay, uh, thanks for for the question, um, Don. Um, I think um, this is a really um, big question, I should say. Um, um, turbine combustion modeling, I think, is experience based in general uh, because it's just too complicated you have to combine too many uh, models together to get um, a good result um, and sometimes you can get um, cancellations of error um, and you don't even know why one case works and another doesn't um, and um, and this is actually the um, one of the reasons why I I started doing uh, detailed um, chemical kinetics um, because 
um, I think they are more first principle, okay, or more ab initial. Um, and so you don't have to rely on strong assumptions like flamelets or, um, you know, thick and flame or, um, you know, um, um, partial mixing on the, uh, um, in, in one cell, um, you know, all these, um, all these models, they, um, you know, they, uh, they are difficult to be generalized on the different situations. So in, um, including uh, detailed chemical kinetics uh, on the fly would be the future, and that's what we are doing. Um, but without a model like DNN, um, it's simply impossible to deal with the um, um, the computational workload. Um, and and this is um, the very reason why we are uh, doing the DNN for chemical kinetics. Um, and I think it is it is particularly important for turbulent combustion to rule out some a, a big portion of uncertainties. Okay, thank you. And next question is from Yang Ban. Hello, Professor Chen. I'm Ban Yang from Tianjin University. Thank for your excellent report. It seems that the ODE solver. CVOD is used in DFRAM. However, when we implement CVOD into open form, we find that the accuracy is improved while the computational efficiency is lower than that of SEU LEX. And CVOD is more sensitive to tolerance than SU LEX. Do you meet this trade-off when using CVOD? If so, does the OD is fully computed by Torch? Um, I think um, at the beginning we did a similar comparison for um, uh, between CVOD and and the um, open form um, default um, OD solver. Um, I think it was similar or slightly slower. Um, and of course it depends on the um it depends on the tolerance you use. Um if you use the um uh, default um tolerances in CVOD, I think which is quite tight in Kantara, I think is I think the relative one was minus nine and the absolute one was minus fifteen. Um but if you are and you need this um, tight tolerance for ignition problems and also extreme um, conditions for chemical kinetics itself. Um, but if you're doing this in a um, flame or multidimensional flame, we found that you can actually relax this to, um, for example, I think the default we're using in deep flame is minus six and minus 10. Um, and for the last question, um, no, we're not doing the ODE um, by torch um, because it does not really make a lot of sense if you do the ODE as it is um, using a, um, a tensor um, solver because it's too stiff and the matrix itself, itself is too stiff. Um, in the end, basically, you are doing everything in serial, not in parallel. Um, but what you can do is you can do analytical, I think, analytical Jacobian um, approaches. And um, I think, um, or you can just use explicit uh, methods. Um, and that would be one way to go, I think. If, you, you, if you're doing explicit integration with smaller time steps, um, you don't have the stiffness problem. You can use uh, a lot of CUDA cores to run, um, but again, for low mark flows, um, the accuracy would be a problem for those um, explicit um, integrators. Okay, thank you. Next question is from Zifeng Wang Wang Zifeng Wang from Tsinghua University. Um, hello, Professor Chen. Thank you for your very nice talk. I'm interested in the real fluid model. Could you share your expectations or progress on implementing 
real fluid model and future version of different? Um, okay, thank you for this question. Um, um, a real fluid um, is a very important, I think, um, topic for rocket engines. Um, and um, oh, oh, and we're, we're doing that for this purpose. Um, um, and unfortunately, we have not really made um, a lot of progress. Um, but what, one thing we could try is to, I think, um, a few months ago, I chaired a session um, in this webinar series um, by um, um, by uh, um, Professor um, Kim, I think, um, and um, I think he shared a open source library um, based on open form. What we could do is we could um, um, see if that can be directly linked with Deep Flame to use um, that real fluid model. Um, and for real fluid model, I think there's a possibility for deep learning as well, um, because the transport properties, um, they become very expensive to calculate and they can actually overrun the um, chemical kinetics. Um, in that case, I think it would be interesting. I think um, uh, Professor um, uh, Jianxin Wang um, has made some progress in that direction. Um, I think uh, probably you should turn to him to for more, um, you know, uh, insightful um, advice um, within your own university. But in the future, I think um, uh, definitely this is this is the future uh, one of the features we will include in Deep Flame. Okay, thank you. And um, is there any question? More question for the audience. On yes. the penalties. Okay. Go First ahead. of all, thank you for the presentation. I think it was very impressive what you have shown. So I think I will uh, take a closer look at the code. Um, I have two questions. The first question is when you do the ODE integration with CVOD, let's say, uh, which set of state variables do you choose? So I know, for example, open form used to use uh, temperature and concentrations. Then they switched, I think, to moles. In Cantera, you also have temperature and mass fractions. And now you also have moles. Uh, which formulation do you use? And does it impact the DNN predictions? Um, I think we're using the Ys, which are the mass fractions um, for the DNN. Um, and um, I think Tian Han would be the better person to ask, and he is also in the chat. Um, and um, if if they have done any um, test on the um, difference between using mass fractions and mole fractions or concentrations. Um, okay, and the second question is, you mentioned to maybe bring the solving of your governing equations to GPUs. And this sounds like a lot of work especially considering that open form is finite volume, unstructured grids. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea or plan how to do this? Do you want to chain or keep finite volume or change to a different method? Um, actually, uh, this is um, uh, this is probably um, the central topic for before Deep Flame 2.0. Um, <laughs> this is... <laughs> um, and... Um, we have done some background research. Um, and I think um, there is a um, recent work, not recent, I think probably in 2020 open form workshop um, by a Italian team. Um, so they leveraged the library called um, PESI, if, if I'm not um, mistaken. I think that's a general platform for solving linear equations um, and um, openform.com um, version of uh, openform gave a interface version called external solver. Um, and you should probably ask Yasak, uh, I think he <laughs> wrote that piece of code uh, to just make a bridge with uh, PEC C. Um, and unfortunately, the speed up wasn't very um, impressive. I think. One GPU, um, you know, V100 
versus one CPU was like a factor of six, which is not very mm -hmm. impressive. Um, and um, so, yeah, there's a lot of work to be done. And um, and I, I think we need more uh, help from the HPC people to make this happen. And, and that's what we're doing uh, right now. Yeah, I think the biggest bottleneck right now with the uh, PET-C interface is that you always have to assemble the matrices on the CPU mm -hmm. in the open form format, then you transform the matrix format, and then you pass it to Petsy. So yeah. If you could uh, assemble the matrix directly on the GPU, let's say by some kind of uh, mapping based on the static mesh in the simulation, mm -hmm. I think this could give you a lot of speed up. But also, I think this would require a lot of development. But if you were able to do this, this would be very cool. I think a lot of people would uh, benefit from this. Yeah, and that, that's definitely something we would like to do. And I think we probably need some help from the open form developers as well. Um, and, you know, now that Yasak is in Cambridge, so hopefully I can, <laughs> <laughs> can get some help from him. Yeah. But that's in yeah, the plan. Very Thanks. interesting. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I see Professor Zhang raised his hand. Professor Zhang. Uh, yes, okay. Uh, uh, so thank you, thank you very much for a very nice talk. And it is exciting to see lots of uh, developments and uh, uh, implementations from your project. So I have uh, the question regarding the AMR. So you mm -hmm. introduced AMR, I think, on slides 13 and 13.1, right? Mm -hmm. You also mentioned the dynamic load balancing. You mm -hmm. show uh, the results from uh, one dimensional detonation and you compare the I think the execution time, right? Mm -hmm. I think we, uh, uh, if we put or if we remove DLB, the dy dynamic uh, load balancing, the results actually, uh, the ch difference of the results actually is uh, relatively limited. So is it because the case is small or is it because uh, the, the, the decom uh, decomposition method? Um... I think overall, um, I'm just looking at the numbers. Um, yeah, the first one, the left figure. Yeah, the, yeah. I yeah. think you get something like 30 to 40 percent if you use DLB on top of AMR. Um, for this particular case, yes. Um, yeah, and um, I, I think this is a, a small case. Um, first of all, um, we, we should, um, uh, we have not tried this on um on multi-dimensional but i don't think it will get um a, a much of a difference um i it could be related to the um mm, to the uh, decomposition itself i think open form 10 now has a dynamic load balancing for cells okay um, and that's what we are looking to do at the moment so we don't have to receive back Mm -hmm. the loads once we have sent them out uh if okay. if open form has the um you know reform the cells on every processor um by itself i think um in open form 10 and th this is this will probably be released in the first quarter of next year okay um, so deep flame with open form 10 and we will probably see the effects by then um okay. yeah okay thank you and uh, my second question is also uh, about AMR. So uh, you uh, present a true a single reference in your slides. Uh, we also noticed uh, these two references and they extend from like two dimensional to three dimensional and also probably introduce some more uh, detailed implementations there. So uh, in a deep flame, uh, you also include uh, more criteria for refine or coarsen the mesh or not, because uh, in, I think in the original uh, implementation of AMR in open form, I think they only probably use one, right? So sometimes one criteria is not enough to, uh, how to say, to select the region for refinement. Or mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 that's a very good question. Um, I think, um, I think we did something um, towards that direction, but I, I don't remember actually um, if we finished that. Um, we definitely did something to the I.O. So uh, how you control um, the um, 
um, refinement criteria in your dictionary. Um, I don't remember if we could include more than one um, criteria. I, I need to ask um, my student, um, okay. frankly speaking, I, I, I don't know. Okay, never mind. So uh, in the future, do you have any plans for, you know, using AMI like three-dimensional detonation modeling or three-dimensional LES? I think in that in those cases, AMI is uh, uh, very, very important, right, to reduce the computational cost. Yes, um, but I think um, open form AMR has its limitations. Um, and um, I, I think last week or the week before, um, the, and, you know, AMROC um, would be um, a better place to go if you are truly interested in, um, in you know, high, high dimensional um, um, AMR. Um, in open form, I think um, there's a lot of um, simplifications and the flux correction. I have not looked into detail. Uh, I don't think it's done in a very thorough way. Um, so, for example, if you're doing AMR, not with the detonation wave, for example, just the flame, mm -hmm. you will get oscillations. Um, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you very much for your answering my questions and uh, looking forward to your more progress from your team. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for organizing. Mm, I think Professor Johnson has questions to ask. Professor Johnson. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Chu. Uh, thank you for the wonderful talk. It's very nice to see the very impressive progress in the past one year. Uh, I have a general question about uh, deep frame. Uh, basically, uh, it's a very powerful tool. I think we need to encourage the student to use this deep frame. Uh, however, I have some problem when I ask my student to use deep frame. You know, in Peking University, I cannot require the students to use this tool, right? I, I only can encourage him. Uh, usually, in our lab, we have different codes, like we can simulate the triple frame or detonation in two-dimensional with the, with the, with the codes. Uh, Developed by different groups. Mm -hmm. uh, when I ask them to use frame, they, they seem to be not uh, not not happy because they, 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 they need to switch to another tool. Uh, can you give me some reasons that I can uh, suggest to the students to use deep frame? Okay. Uh, that, okay. That that is a very good question, and uh, I should I, um, and um, it. it it's a good opportunity for me to to explain why um why we um um started this project. Um, I think the the very reason behind um deep flame is that um you know in terms of um functions and uh, um you know all, all these um code features um is it does not have a um how to say so far we have not made a very substantial and at least not to the next level um and uh but what we have done so far is that we have really um opened everything to the community um so there no there's no room for box if there is a bug it's open to everyone okay um and I think that's very important for students uh, when they write codes, uh, they really have to understand by heart uh, and they really have to understand the equations, the discretizations and everything by heart be before they can actually go on an open source project. Um, I think this is one reason um, for me and it, it, it actually has a, a, a cost. So uh, my students would have had a paper by now if I didn't push them towards open source. But I think I've seen their growth um, and uh, I've seen how they have written the documentations and um, they have worked within a group. Um, I think one particular reason would be um, if you have students using codes from different groups, it's difficult for them to communicate, to exchange ideas and work. But if you are working within one framework, um, I think it's better probably for them to all go towards uh, the same direction and share experiences, um, although they can work on different, um, you know, problems. 
I think that would be one reason. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I think Professor Tian Han Zhang has questions to ask. Uh, actually, I just want to uh, provide provide a response uh, for Dr. Zavis' question. Um, uh, Dr. Zavis, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's regarding your question about how to use the deep, deep neural network regarding how uh, which one you choose, uh, whether you are using more fractions or use uh, mass fractions. Uh, so in, in brief words, the answer is depend is it's depending on how you train the neural network. If you are training based on the mass fraction data, then you use mass fraction as the input. If you are training by the uh, mole fraction, then you use mole fraction as the input. So that's a flexible choice for you, up to you. But in, in practice, we find the mass fractions is better because that can suppress some numerical oscillation or some physical oscillations due to the uh, total mole number change. For example, for, oxy for nitrogen, uh, if you use mole fraction, you can see some oscillations in terms of the nitrogen uh, mole fraction in, in, in that number. And that number is not uh, favored in training the neural network. So for that reason, we always use mass fraction as input for all the neural network we trained so far. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a response. Yeah, thanks. Mm. Thank you. And um, Professor Zizhen, I have one question. Okay. And um, can we train the DNN to solve the PDE, uh, which is mainly the next iteration and curation in open form, like the ODE integration as you shown here, maybe in laminar flows, maybe simpler. What is the difficulty about this? Um, this has really opened um, a, a whole different... <laughs> A topic, um, and I I don't think um, we are quite ready yet for um, you know training. Uh, I I think there's a lot of um, um, attempts from the fluid mechanics community, um, and with one particular um, example being the um, physics involved neural network, um, and um, I think they, uh, I mean, there there are essential problems with um, with PDEs, and in ODEs you you don't really have boundary um, problems. Okay, you 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 are facing an initial value problem, and you don't have perturbations from your boundaries, um, and the uncertainties are much much smaller uh, compared to um, compared to a PDE system where you can get all kinds of boundary um you know and and these are all um i think um, um it's a dimensionality problem you have to consider all different boundary conditions all these perturbation types and different um types of odes if you have a continuity a discontinuity what can you do um all these things um it's it's really just difficult to have a um a general framework you really have to train towards your particular problem and and it becomes an optimization problem um but in terms of speeding up our simulations i am not too confident at least not so um up to this point i have not seen any hope yet okay thank you and um, my other question is will it be possible to turn the dnn on the fly Hopefully for some transient problems in which the uh, chemistry reaction is quite similar at different locations and time. I think that would be, uh, again, a question for Tian Han. Um, and, um, but the idea would be actually, if we can get a pre-trained model, we should always go with the pre-trained model, at least from a, a CFD perspective, um, because, um, when you have to give a model to the GPU, um, the GPU doesn't like it to be, you know, changed all the time. Um, so, um, and that would take um, some time for for the the data to reform. Um, and uh, um, also, we should minimize the the GPU CPU um, 
uh, data transfer and uh, data copy, I should say. Um, and if you every time if you have a different uh, set of um, inputs or samples from your CPU, um, you have to change all that. That would be a nightmare. At least um, I, I I think for the current hardware um, where you are connecting your GPU with uh, um, with one um, single line, I think um, that that is difficult. Thank you. And I think there is no more questions. Is there any more questions from the panelists or the audience? No, I think our it's been an hour and a half, I think. And I, I would like to thank Professor Chen again for this yeah, very insightful talk. And I would like to thank you all for attending this with open form and combustion simulation webinar. And thank you and have a nice weekend. Okay, thank you. Thank you for having me. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for the organizing.